Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 14th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, we're gonna to return to some of our typical climate analysis. Every week we do an analysis of the present state of Arctic sea ice, and we provide a climate change weather and climate analysis related to the present state of Arctic sea ice. I know we've been talking a lot about hurricanes recently. That's because the tropics have, have really gone off. And back in 2009, I, I read a book by Dr. James Hansen called The Storms of My Grandchildren. Well, I just wanna say as a caveat, it appears that the storms of my grandchildren are kind of coming early because we're, we're seeing climate change impact extreme weather events, although the kinds of impacts that we are seeing right now are, are dangerous and damaging. They are nowhere near what we would see if we continue to burn fossil fuels and emit carbon into the atmosphere through other human-based processes and continue to see atmospheric greenhouse gases continue to rise as well as global temperatures. So, so what we're seeing now, just wanna say as a caveat, are the early effects and, and the less damaging effects, even though they are well outside the historical context for human beings and our civilization. So just a general caveat and a bookend to, to the very severe storm situation that we are seeing at present, I am now gonna talk about sea ice. And, and just as a context, I just like to set the context for this sea ice discussion for this week, based on this graph that has been produced by Zach Laib. I'm gonna go ahead and provide a link to Zach Laib's Twitter feed. It's a good, a good feed to follow if, you're going to, if you wanna keep track of sea ice. And this is a graph of baseline Arctic temperature anomalies since the 1960s and it is, is a departure from the 1981 to 2010 baseline, which is already warmer than average. And I'd just like to comment that the Arctic has been undergoing an ongoing period of, of extreme warming. And we are continuing to see that trend of warming in 2018 backing a bit off from recent years, but but with January to August averages well above climatological norms, even considering the warmer than normal 1981 to 2010 baseline. It's worth noting that storms have tended to prevail in the Arctic during summer, and this has tended to spread the sea ice out, which can be a bit of a defense for, for sea ice, at least in the extent measure. But despite this spreading out of sea ice, we are at present eighth lowest on record or about 2.7 million square kilometers below the 1980s average, which shows a continued trend of loss that has been ongoing for some time now due to human forced climate change in the Arctic. That said, we are about one point, looks like about 1.4 million square kilometers above the record low set in 2012. And it's, it's, we're not going to see a new record low this year. That said, Arctic sea ice extents are greatly reduced from historical periods. Now at present, we see much of the ice that remains along the North American and Greenland side with a large section of ice receded above the 80 degree north latitude line on the Atlantic and Barents Sea side, as well as on the Siberian side of the Arctic, with record low sea ice levels being measured along the Barents side of the Arctic as well. And this has been a trend for this summer with the sea ice being beaten back off its typical safe havens near Greenland, although we have seen a bit of refreeze now as temperatures have dipped well below freezing with seasonal, seasonal cooling north of Greenland and into the North Pole region. Regions that have remained above freezing are on the Siberian side and we've seen a continued winnowing way of the ice 
near Siberia, particularly in the East Siberian Sea. And it's possible we will continue to see some melt in this zone over the coming days, but, but beyond the 10-day period, temperatures in this zone start to dip well below freezing. And as temperatures dip below the negative two degrees Celsius line, we can tend to see some, some refreeze start to occur. Now it's worth noting that this diffuse ice flow is subject to winds and currents. So we might see some continued loss in the next couple of weeks, but, but in particular over the next seven day time period. It's worth noting that the above 80 degree north latitude line is, is, has still trended above normal for this time of year, the normal line being the 1958 to 2000 line as indicated here by the green line in the DMI measure. The temperatures have, have tended to depart in a three to five degrees Celsius above normal range for this zone and, and that has maintained which will tend to slow sea ice recovery and we, we will also tend to see likely tend to see this this departure line increase as we get closer to winter over the coming days temperatures in the arctic overall are predicted to range between one and about 1.5 degrees celsius above normal with warm air moving in from central Siberia and through the Chukchi Sea Zone and maintaining warmer than normal temperatures, particularly along the Siberian side of the Arctic, which may enable melt to continue in the ice diffuse zone of the East Siberian Sea. Temperatures are starting to dive below freezing, however, in the high latitude zones and, and near Greenland, as we can see in this GFS model, this predicted GFS model for the next 10 days, with some well below freezing temperatures predicted to start to move into the near Siberian zone, although above freezing or near freezing temperatures are expected to remain until about September 18th. So we have at least a good three to five days in which temperatures are likely to continue to enhance melt for this zone so we may see continued losses however as we get into the latter portion temperatures do start to fall so so we may see some some re-emergence of, of freeze even in the near siberian zone as we get closer to october now taking a look at the satellite shot just checking the time here we can see that the ice is, is greatly beaten back in on the near Siberian zone with large regions of open water, particularly in the Laptev Sea and in the Karas Sea and in the Barents. The ice is starting to show indications of refreeze near Greenland, but the diffuse ice in the East Siberian Sea is continuing to melt and, and winnow away as it is more subject to the impacts of, of waves and winds and storms. Although it appears unlikely that all of this ice will melt away over the next couple of weeks as much cooler than normal temperatures, I'm sorry, as much cooler temperatures, even though they remain above normal, are expected to start to return to the region with the seasonal return of, of fall. So overall, Arctic sea ice extents are about eighth lowest on record. We are likely to see some continued sea ice loss in the near Siberian zones over the coming days. But with the typical seasonal return of, of cooler temperatures, despite above normal temperatures in the range of one to 1.5 degrees Celsius in the Arctic, we expect to see some sea ice refreeze even in the, the much warmer than normal zones near Siberia over the next, well, toward the end of the next 10 day period. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.